It's time to get the party started. This is the legendary Macho Man, Randy Savage. Welcome to the IndyCast. For the last four years, bringing to you pop culture, professional wrestling, and a splash of grass. Now to your hosts, Chad and Shelly Allen, Zach Romero, and Luna Lynn. This is the IndyCast. Greetings, everybody. Nice switch up. Welcome to the IndyCast. Uh, Chad Allen, Zach Romero, it is a uh, two-man power a, trip a episode. Hitter, you, a yeah, I bet you are. Uh, bing bong to that one. You're lucky we're using my phone. I don't have the soundboard. Uh, Zachary, we have a guest today. Uh, that's on uh, the name. Perfect. <laughs> uh, yes, we do. We have a returning uh, guest to the IndyCast in the uh, rebooted season four that's right. to catch everybody up. This is one of the uh, the... Front runners of additional members of the show. Yeah, exactly. In, in terms of uh, hosting probably, duties. Probably our sixth guest yeah. host, if we really want to count and, it that uh, way. We, we, we've been there since the beginning for him, and he's been there since the beginning for us. Mm-hmm. And now we're seeing him blossom into this beautiful wrestling bouquet. Meanwhile, we've gone nowhere. We still are in the slums, <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, we'll ride off his coattails. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the IndyCast for the first time. In a Season long time. Uh, Jason Kane. Welcome, Jason. Oh, I'm glad you got to have me back. It's been so long since I've been on the IndyCast. Like, I know. It's been a long time. Yeah. We, we I think been... the last time I was on the IndyCast was when you did the live show at the Orpheum. After oh, right about FIP show. No, I thought like, he I still had I still had short hair. <laughs> you did have short hair. I could have sworn we've had him on since then. One. I think he might, he might have been on with one and I on the phone. Yeah, there might have been a phoner. There, yeah. there could have been a phoner, a phoner in there too. Boner. But but since then, maybe yeah. Jason Cade has taken the damn world, world by world, storm. World traveler, Jason yeah, Cade. True. Uh, world traveler trying to, trying to steal my spot at brawl at the announcers table. Yeah, Jason no. Cade. Um, <laughs> which, by the way, Jason, thank you. Everything. Thank you for letting me know. By the way, that apparently what I need to do to get behind the announcer table at brawl is to just uh, tell them I'm doing a couple matches and knocking somebody out of the way. Yeah, basically so. wait till I get in the ring and then just steal my seat. Right. Or yeah, or, or I do paper rock scissors with buckshot, and yeah, we true. can we can switch. So, but uh, but Jason, so you know when we first kind of had you on the show way back when, you were you know uh, an ACW staple. You were mainly just a Florida guy, and now you've branched out uh, a all over this country and b all over out of this country. Right. Uh, you took was it your first official trip to Mexico this this uh, this past month? Yeah, actually, it, it was my first my first trip to Mexico ever. Hmm. Um, uh, it wasn't the first time out of the country. I did Canada this past this past year too, a few times working with uh, Alpha One and Smash. But uh, first time south of the border for Mexico, like, thir- like actually south of the border, not in South Carolina. The stop at south of the border, <laughs> which I do love, by the way. The, uh, you're you're the only person that loves that, Jason. South of the border. That place is horrible and dirty and scary, and I don't know why you like it. Also, uh, uh, went to- it's a staple. When you're driving through South Carolina, you have to stop at the south of the border. And I once, we once did a road trip back from New York. It was like me, Swan, Rob Naylor, Brandon, Josh, and Sal. And Sal just wakes up out of a dead sleep. It was like, pull over south of the border. So we pull over south of the border, and then me and Rob Naylor proceeded to make Sal take a picture with us while we're all wearing sombreros. This, this picture is out online somewhere. I, and I will, I will find it book. and change my hype picture for this I was going to say, A, that. B, <laughs> world's greatest impression of Sal. We just got to hear that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, but no, yeah, you got to visit Mexico, a.k.a., you know, Sweaty Canada, as it's sometimes known. <laughs> sweaty Canada. And, uh, Good God, man. And so you were Please. there with Cruz, actually, uh, <laughs> former guest of the IndyCast. Yep, my uh, my tag team partner on Tuesdays, Cruz. And so uh, uh, wh- who who brought you in um, to Mexico, and what were your impressions of that... Uh, I'm not going to give you up. It's only going to get me in trouble if I come up with another nickname yeah, for it. Yeah, so, I think Sweaty Canada what, might be the... Uh, what were your impressions of Sweaty Canada, and what companies brought you down? Uh, it was with uh, DTU. Uh, I actually met them at WrestleCon after, after the Super Show. Crazy Boy came up to me 
and was talking to me about how, like, he, I really impressed him, and he really wanted me to come down for a tour. So I said, okay, cool. So I went down there for five days, and uh, the first day, it was just me and Desmond Xavier, and we showed up, and, like, the entire locker room was, like, sitting out by the ring and gave us, like, a standing ovation. And then they all st stood up and, like, like they obviously said it in Spanish, we had a, uh, a translator. They stood up and, and told us how, like, happy they were that we were there and how they looked our stuff up and they were honored to be able to share a locker room and a ring with us and stuff, which I thought was mind-blowing. Anybody was saying this stuff to me, but... Um, well, at least that, that, that's what they said they were saying. They could have been lying, you know. <laughs> but, no, they were... They were uh, they, they they were great. They, they they were everyone treated us like they like we were family. And like initially going down there, I was nervous because like it's I've never been to Mexico and I don't speak Spanish, so like, they had the whole language barrier there. And uh, it was just a blast. It was like five awesome days, um, except for like getting sick. Like the food made me sick. So, like for the last three days, like the first two days, I just had the shits. Like <laughs> it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> You know you're for, not for the last like two and a, You know you're not supposed to drink what? the water, right, Kate? You, that's the whole I thing. Didn't, I didn't drink the water. It, it was just the food. Like I had bottled water the whole time. But like I, oh man, it was just bad. I was just pooping left and right. Uh, I was telling them all the yeah, mucho caca. Uh, but, that's, that's all you need to learn. Yeah. Well, Kate, yeah. let me ask you this: Which is more difficult to plan and call a match with a language barrier? Or to wrestle a match and try not to shit your pants the whole time? <laughs> well, I've wrestled a few matches and tried not to shit my pants the whole time. So I think that's easier. <laughs> He's become an expert at that uh, now. Uh, actually, it goes... Yeah, because uh, because I, I refuse, once I put my gear on, to take it off again. And so I'm done. And sometimes I have to, I have to poop during matches. So it's like, well, hope I don't poop today. And it hasn't happened yet. So Which, which that fact alone... I wrestled a... I wrestled a whole tournament. The USWA tournament that, that, that I won had to poop the entire tournament. Three matches. And one of them was against John Davis, where I thought I was really going to poop my pants during that match. <laughs> but I didn't. So, yeah. I became an expert at, at wrestling when having to poop. And I, and I believe I can safely say on behalf of John Davis, thank, thank you, you for not pooping. Well, I was yeah. actually going to say that uh, that alone puts Jason Cade above... Psycho Sid Vicious in terms right. of wrestling quality. True. Because Psycho Sid has shit his pants in the ring before. This is true. Jason Kane is not. That's so, true. Better wrestler, also, I would say so. I actually just heard a story recently. It also puts him above uh, WWE Hall of Famer Andre the Giant, who apparently pooped on Bad News Brown during a match once. <laughs> I just heard that story well, yesterday. There you go. So, there, so, Jason, if you need to make a t-shirt that says, I'm better than Andre the Giant and Psycho Sid Vicious. Because I've never pooped Because I've never pooped in the ring. You... Or Blanche, you can totally do that. Maybe we need to make a poop, poop cade poop shirt. That's true. That could be the new, uh, the new hashtag. <laughs> so, um, but how, so... No, so we don't poop, Cade, don't poop. Yeah, that's true. Don't please, poop. Please don't, don't poop. poop. Yeah, please, please don't, don't poop. poop. Um, I see a chant I'm starting next time. Yeah, I'm going to Jason Cade. But, but let's talk a little bit about you actually, like, planning your matches and things like that when your opponent doesn't speak English. Actually, it's 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 a lot easier when uh, it's it was actually easier to plan a match matches in Mexico than it was with some of the matches I do in Florida because <laughs> like wrestling is a like universal language so I just make a, a gesture and we just like, like pantomime things and it's like oh, okay yeah yeah and nobody ever says no no one's ever like oh man I don't want to take that or I don't want to take that it's just like, okay and everyone just takes it because everyone knows how, knows how to do everything down there like <laughs> the the pre-show every every night all five nights were these kids who were like 13 14 and they were awesome like these kids were doing all kind of stuff like all kind of lucha and like they, they, they were just phenomenal like selling ev like everything like they're gonna be like these like the top guys in the on like in the world in the next like 10 15 years like they these kids are they they were great so like like it's just such a high level out, out there like because they start when they're like super young and everything so like calling them like like I said when they say wrestling is a universal language it really is a universal language because like it like, it just didn't it didn't affect anything like I was able to call them a match no problem 
with, with, all, with everyone. And then uh, there were some people that could speak a little bit of English, so they knew a little bit. But like, uh, and like there was a translator, but I didn't have to use them that much. So like, it was, uh, it was like a way, it was way better than I thought it was gonna be. Cause I thought it was like, man, I thought I wasn't gonna be able to call anything, cause like they don't, like that man is the language barrier. They don't know. But like it was, it was actually, I was actually pleasantly surprised of how easy it was. Now, everybody, uh, much like Jason Cade, prepare your buttholes here, because I'm about to do, oh, no. I'm about to pull a question from way back oh, in his first appearance. So, if anybody listening hasn't heard that first uh, monumental interview with Jason Cade, as he's swearing right now, um, we're going to censor it. Um, back in the first interview, we had talked about how Jason had learned um, his first sort of era of wrestling came from the training he was taking. And it wasn't until he saw the Young Bucks in person that he decided to sort of shift where his uh, technique was going and sort of change up his style. So I'm curious, Jason, being in that wrestle culture in Mexico, did you take anything away? Did you shift anything? Did you have that sort of moment again where you're like, wow, this is what this is the kind of wrestling I want to do? Any any of those kind of epiphany moments while in Mexico? Uh, yeah, actually, I, I learned I learned uh, quite a few things when I was out there that like I'm starting to incorporate things now slowly but surely. Uh, but no, like a whole 360. Oh, this is what we're gonna do now. Like not not like when I watched the Bucks and and was really introduced to indie wrestling for the first time. Uh, nothing nothing that major, but I did like learn stuff that I could take away and and, and use in my in my style now. Good. Good. I was going to say, I think that's basically, as a world traveler, I think that's probably the best you can you can do. It's just to take a little something other than, you know, possible digestive... Poss- possible you know. dysentery. Yeah. <laughs> you wanna, other than the dysentery, you want to take something positive with you everywhere you go. Thanks Jason Cade has died of dysentery. For, yeah. the, for the last two days, all I could eat was crackers and, and Doritos. Like, that's all I ate for the last two days there. Because that's the only thing I, I could... I could like that, that would like settle my stomach. It was crazy. I've never had Doritos ever settle my stomach. <laughs> ever, ever, ever. I'm going to Mexico. So <laughs> apparently. Yeah. So well, here. So let me segue off of yours then, because obviously, like we talked about when Jason got introduced to independent wrestling via the Young Bucks, it kind of changed his career. Now, well, he just recently debuted for Pro Wrestling Gorilla, who uh, in the main event of that show just happened to be the Young Bucks. So, did you get a chance while you were at PWG, we'll talk about the overall of it in just a minute, but did you get a chance to um, get to meet the the Young Bucks, or were they, like, held away in their own locker room with, you know, don't look at them in the eye? (laughs) Actually, for that show, the Young Bucks weren't there. I thought they were the the main one. They were the next one, damn it. Yeah, the the, the, the main event uh, for for that show was Zack Sabre Jr. and Mario Scroll versus Red Dragon. That was Red Dragon. That was awesome, by the way. So. Yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, the Young Bucks will be the next 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 month. Which I've I've met them like twice. Uh, which I can't wait to like, you know, be like there again at PWG with them. That's thing would be awesome. But uh, PWG was just like amazing. Now, I was gonna say, I let's gush like, about that for a second. You got to make your debut at PWG. Um, I'm interested how you got booked to, to PWG on this one. What was the connection? Was this another thing that maybe came through from? Like WrestleMania this year, or how did how did that come about to get you kind of connected with Pro Wrestling Gorilla? He was in the same bathroom uh, well, shitting his brains out in Mexico as the guy who books PWG. They bonded over to <laughs> That's Excalibur, I do believe. Yes. So, <laughs> I uh, actually apparently I was uh, Ricochet had been uh, going to bat for me for a while, and then. Uh, they asked Sammy if they knew who, if he knew who I was, and Sammy started going to bat for me. And then, like, also WrestleMania weekend help because Excalibur was able to call my match in, in the in the ten man. Uh, and then Shane Strickland went to bat for me, and I guess the Holy Trinity there. Uh, that's what that, that's what did it. And uh, I true story. I didn't know it was finalized and it was actually going to happen and confirmed. And so they tweeted that I was making my debut. Nice. Then the Pope I called, really, I, and they I, vouched for Jason Cade, and then right. it was basically, yeah. it was in. <laughs> I, I I really didn't know. Like, I was sitting on my couch watching TV, and I get a text saying, congratulations. I'm like, on what? 
<laughs> PWG just got announced. And I went and looked, and it got announced. Jason Campers, Desmond Xavier, uh, June 16th. And I was like, oh my god, this is this is really gonna happen. So yeah, that was a, that's that's how that that's how it came up, came that's how that came about. But yeah, just uh, people going to bat going to bat for me, and they were willing to, they were willing to give me a chance. So and I ran with it. So let me see if I can not botch this up then. Uh, I, from what I've heard, obviously none of the, I haven't seen any of the, uh, the footage yet. I'm sure knowing PWG, that'll be out very soon. Uh, but I, I heard, so. I heard the match went very well and I believe I heard you got a please come back chant, which might have predicated the, uh, the next show, I'm assuming. Yeah, uh, it's like they were literally into me from the time I came out. Um, so that was awesome. And a couple people, knew, some people knew who I was already, which is like my boggling that people even even knew who I was. Um, I, I've only been, had been in the California once, so and it was like 40 people in that crowd. This was like 420. It just sold out, and they were loud, and they were go, like going crazy, and like literally at, at, at points, I felt the building shaking. That's how crazy they were going for for this match that we're having. And then um, the match ends, uh, and like. Desmond picks me up in, 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 the, in the middle of the ring and the crowd just starts chanting, please come back. And it was like, I can't even put into words how that felt. It was literally the coolest thing I've ever had happen in my life. Like to have a, the PWG crowd accept me and take me in like that so so easily. And I, after, after one match, and like I literally just put everything I had into that match. I was like, it's all or nothing really. Uh, it's make it or break it now like this, this is it and it was um, it, it was the best thing that I've ever like been up like it was the best thing I've ever been. It's, it's up there with with it's dead man at WrestleCon it was like such I, I can't I can't put, put it put it into words it was a humble experience well three three rapid questions about that that run at PWG number one how did the track suit go over oh it was great everyone loved it Good. Good. Game is awesome. People were asking, like, "Hey, you can put that on a shirt?" And I'm like, "I will, pretty soon." Okay, hold on. Let me uh, put brakes on this because I haven't heard the story. Tracksuit? Yes. Jason so. Cade contacted Fully Gimmicked and said, "Hey, I've got this idea. I want a black and white tracksuit with the classic Jason Cade logo on it, and uh, you know, a little like teddy bear version of Jason Cade." And so we whipped it up. And it looked stylish as shit. And we mailed it to him. I think it got to him like a couple of days before his flight. Threw it in the bag. Flew over to California. And I, I think I saw like maybe a picture or two of him coming down to the ring wearing the jacket. Um, and uh, so that, A, great. Super glad it went over well. Number two, uh, did you get to cross paths with James Franco? I saw that he was in the crowd at PWG. Yeah. Okay, so that kind of, I, I'm kind of upset about that. So <laughs> I'm sitting there, and we're all selling merch, and then Sammy, Jake, and Trevor all walk off, and I'm like, what are they going to do? They went to go meet James Franco. They didn't tell me. So I got left out of the James Franco meeting, so I didn't get to meet him. That was uh, a kind of butthurt about that. <laughs> I was just going to say, uh, that could have been your closer shot to meeting and greeting Sarah Michelle Gellar. I know, I know. So like, I just gotta, I just gotta, I just gotta keep busting my ass, keep getting brought back, so I can see, so I can meet Sarah Michelle Geller. Like, which is, I think, is 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 complete though. I think officially, I think officially, your run to try to meet Sarah Michelle Geller is probably the greatest underdog story in professional wrestling today. <laughs> Even the Wrestle Circus is tweeting it for me now. <laughs> that's all, that's, that's the key. Did you guys see that tweet? Yeah, that's yeah. the key. Um, final question about PWG right at the moment is, uh, while in California, either trip, have you eaten at um, In-N-Out or Ros- uh, Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles? I, I ate at In-N-Out the first time I went. Um... Actually, no, like the first time I went, when I went to MoCap, I ate it in and out. I didn't even eat, eat it in L.A. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, that that was, it was okay. Um, I have not eaten at Roscoe's, though. It is delicious. However, I've eaten there twice now. However, I did get to go to Sunnydale High School, and that's 
really what's important here. That's true. That is pretty rad. Yeah. See, the funny part is I, I got to have In-N-Out when I was in Texas, because mm-hmm. um, they have them there. Whataburger is actually better. Oh, okay. I like Whataburger better. That's a ballsy uh, statement. I had Fat Burger last time I was there. That was pretty good. I've yet to have Fat Burger. Mm. Yeah. So. I, I, it was like, ridi- like, like you would think, it was ridiculously large. <laughs> and actually, let's... And actually, kind of speaking of Texas, you've been do, uh, doing stuff with, with Russell Circus, which is based out of there. How, yeah, uh, tell I, us a little bit about what I, you've done so far with them. I actually debuted Russell Circus this this, this coming Saturday. Very nice. Which I, I, I'm not sure when this is going to air, but uh, it will be Tomorrow. June 24th, which is this coming Saturday. So I'll make today with the 20th. Uh, I'm not sure, but yeah, I, I am going to be debuting for Russell Circus pretty soon. So hopefully. Hopefully that that could be a continued thing that that that, that I get to do because they seem like an awesome, fun group of people to wrestle in front of. Well, let me ask you this: so, in addition to wrestling in sweaty Canada, wrestling in California for PWG, wrestling in Texas for uh, Wrestle Circus, you've also been paired up with Veda Scott, and I was curious about you guys as a tag team. Uh, what have you learned from Veda, and what have you taught Veda? Well, um, we just we just play off each other so well. Like a lot of like the promo and character stuff, like she's helped me with, and I've got her doing some like more cool stuff and everything. Like we just we just are like the perfect match. Like if, if you've watched any of our matches, uh, which the match with. Shane Strickland and Lacey is on YouTube, so you can from Fast Fish you can catch that out. We're just like it's like a hand and glove fit. We just we just work. It's like when you look at it on paper, it really shouldn't work. And it's like the most random pairing, but I've listened to podcasts telling say, saying like, Oh, you can tell that they've been a tag team for a long time and and, and really we haven't. We've only wrestled six matches together. <laughs> just our, our chemistry is just off the charts. We're trying to get more matches, but uh, and then we we keep happening to accidentally get matching single gear. So we don't really have to have a have tag gear. We can just keep wearing the same gear that we have because it just happens to match. So it, it's just it's just like I I was teaming with Aaron Solo. Uh, did, didn't, I didn't really want to be in a tag team, but like, Veda is the only person I, I I really wanted to team with. Like, it's just it's just so much fun, and she's the best. So if you're listening to us promoters, book pop culture together, because we will have fun. We will cut the sleeves off your t-shirts, and we will wear glasses and look adorable doing it. Well, let me ask you this: In 2017, do you feel like you both have? A better opportunity as a, an intergender tag team. Like, do you feel like you guys have more opportunity? You, like you said, you've only wrestled six matches together. But do you feel like you have maybe a better shot at meeting up against other mixed tag teams than like maybe previous years? Or do you feel like it's just a crapshoot and you know you'll get booked where you book? I, I definitely feel like it's it, it's better it's better like in 2017. Like it's it's uh like. Really, Joey and Candace paved, like paved the way. Like, had it not been for them, like people really wouldn't really take intergender tag teams seriously. Uh, I think intergender intergender wrestling is a thing that like some people oh I don't like it I hate it I shouldn't wrestle girls like no it's stupid like if we're all wrestlers if it's done right it could it could be it it could be someone like I I have some of my most fun with 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 beta tag like tagging like it's 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 great like. I think people who don't like intergender wrestling and don't think intergender tag teams should be a thing are just like kind of short-sighted and like the business has changed it's it's completely different now it's no it's not the same like it was in the 80s and back in my day men didn't wrestle it no it's not that anymore like it's 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 awesome and like it's really thanks to like Joey and Candice like that's who that's that's like the the intergender tag team that like if you're gonna have and like they they can wrestle guys they can wrestle a guy and a girl like it doesn't matter like they're just they're not just an intergender tag they're just a tag team and it's awesome like no matter who they wrestle and that's what me and Vader want to be yeah, I think between not just an intergender tag team just a tag team I think between Joey and between Joey and Candice and 
Um, Lucha Underground being so willing to, to, you know, have the intergender matches there. I think that it's definitely turned a big corner in the last, like, what, three years, I mm-hmm. think? Um, yeah. Into, into what people are willing to accept nowadays. So, I think it's the right time. I think we had a conversation with this during our Anthony Lee episode because him and his wife are a tag team and about how there seems to be more and more of that out there. And I don't think that's a bad thing in the least. So, Is there a tag team in particular that you and Veda really want to work it with? Other than Joey and Candice. Let's other take, them out, of yeah, the, yeah, let's yeah, take them out of the equation. Oh. Oh, other than Joey and Candice. Oh, hmm. Really anybody. Um, really anybody. There's, like, there's a lot of it. Uh, Sammy Callahan, Jessica Havoc, uh, Ricochet, and Tessa. Like, there's... Um, there's a lot of different tag teams that we want to wrestle. Like we just, we just want to uh, wrestle everyone and, and anyone. Like we, I'd love, we'd love to get back in the ring with uh, Cruz and Angel Rose again. Mm-hmm. That was that was fun until Angel dislocated uh, her elbow. That just I think even happened. Um, Trip Cassidy yeah, and Priscilla, like Priscilla Kelly would be a good match for them, too. True. Uh, I can't hear you. What's up? I said Trip Cassidy and Priscilla Kelly, the Carnies, that would be a good uh, yeah, mixed that, tag that, of fight as well. Because you guys have yeah, different that, styles. That, that, that would be great. Like We, we really want to wrestle any and, uh, any and all people. I'd like to see them wrestle the ducks. For some reason, I'd like to see them wrestle the ducks too. I don't know what it is yes, about the, yeah. the the ugly ducklings and, and them that that interest that pique my interest. But there's something there for that one. So, mm. so well, ho- hopefully that, that that happens. And we've been in talks to go back to PWX and not just wrestle other intergender tag teams. Just to be just to be in the tag team division. So nice. Hopefully that that's that's a thing that happens. So. Uh, also, speaking of uh, wrestling women, uh, when you got back from Mexico, uh, you went on a you went on a, a burrito attacking spree on Tuesday nights. Tell everybody <laughs> a, a little bit about the backstory of that. <laughs> okay, so on Tuesdays at Pro Wrestling 2.0, like basically Tuesdays belong to me and Cruz. So I start with Lacey, and you know it went on to. Uh, uh, it, it, it went on to uh, Trisha Dora, and you know, like Tuesdays belong to us, <laughs> and we just heard, you know, it, it, we just heard Arya Blake and Mila and Nikki running their mouth, and we don't, really, I don't really like that. So they start trying to talk mess on Twitter and Facebook and everything. Well, I mean, they are. So I, I told. I'm sorry? They are spoiled brats. That is That's officially true. the tag name. So. Exactly. <laughs> so, so, they just run in their mouth. And then I pull up, I told Aria, I sent her a picture of a, uh, I sent her a picture of, of a burrito. Oh. And I said, I'm going to hit, um, <laughs> she, so what did she say? She, she's like, I think the exact, exact words were, you just want me, you just want, uh, you just want to touch me. Or, or. And I, and I said, I'm going to touch you upside down with this burrito when I get back. Because I was in Mexico. So she could talk all oh, big game when I'm out, out, out of the country. And I couldn't have people thinking I was a liar. So I came back. And I hit her upside down with a burrito. And I let them know that they better not let me and Cruz catch them anywhere around that building on a Tuesday. Any other day, we don't care. But not Tuesdays. Because <laughs> Tuesdays belong to me and Cruz. Yes. So is it? So I'm assuming it's some Tuesday that you, that match has to happen, right? Is it? Is it will it will be like burrito on a pole? We would go that route. That would be maybe the way to go for this. Delicious, well, well, actually, delicious it's, burrito. Uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be on July 18th. Oh, we got a date. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Pro Wrestling 2.0, and uh, it's actually Arya Blake's birthday. So. I believe, take. <laughs> I believe what I challenge her for is a birthday death match. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so, we, 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 we will see what happens. We'll see, we'll see what happens. I'll have Cruz with me. I'm sure she'll have Mila with her. But it's pretty much going to be Jason K versus Arya Blake. And this match has been building 
for years. If you remember, back in the ACW That's days, right. me and Solo were, uh, you know, were a tag team. Wrestling, wrestling the first degree, she just kept sticking her nose in our business. And you know what? It's time she, it's time she gets dealt with. The so, slowest, the slowest Blake, burn uh, rivalry in the history of wrestling. Yeah, these two. Also, oh, should, man. should probably Google what the proper way to get fondant out of your eyeballs is <laughs> if it's a birthday death match. <laughs> Just so you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. I'm gonna fight Arya Blake on a Tuesday. It's been it, it, it's been building. It's, it's, it was bound to happen. So. Well, shoot, shoot. Uh, so Jason, since you are uh, globe trotting these days and taking the long trips, I wanted to uh, to ask, like for instance, your uh, lengthy flight from PWG back here to Florida. Uh, what is a go-to album or artist that you're listening to while on such a lengthy (parentheses) fucking miserable flight <laughs> from the West Coast to the East Coast? My snores. I just sleep the entire flight. I don't. I don't actually listen to anything. I just put my neck pillow on and put my head up, up against the window. Or if I'm in the middle, I just put my head up against my shoulder with my neck pillow, and I just sleep. You lucky man. I as, know, soon right? as, as soon as it takes off, I'm out. Yeah, I'm I wish so I train. I wish I had that. That's... Even if you did, you've got two children. Like, well, yeah, even if you true. were like, "Oh, daddy, nap time," they'd be like, "Dad." Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> Me the other hand, trying to leaving Las Vegas at like three in the morning their time to get back to Florida, and I could not sleep a wink. It was goddamn miserable. But let me guess, Luna unconscious? <laughs> no, uh, Luna staring me dead in the face, going, "We could die at any moment because she's not great on planes." Oh, she's not a plane person. No. Okay, so obviously Kate is because he can. Sleep yeah, no, right goddamn them, kidding. So. He's like he's like me when I was like four years old in the back seat of the car, just like <laughs> going to grandma's house. <laughs> I bet you he's like, do you fall asleep in cars that easy, too? Yes, I yeah. do. See, see, he's just... Unless, unless, unless I'm driving. Well, I, yeah, I would hope. Yeah, that's a good thing. You shouldn't do it while you're driving. <laughs> Especially when I'm driving. Yeah. Uh, I actually, I, I I stay up... I, I, I usually can stay up when, like, when it's, like, me and Veda driving. And, I, and like, because usually we're, we always used to be, like, the only drivers. So, like, we just stay up with each other and don't, and don't sleep. Um... So that's a that's a thing. Uh, but when I can sleep, uh, I no, I knock out quick. So, Cade, since you're an older, wiser wrestler now, <laughs> uh, you're out of your rookie years, and and you know you're you're a, a more of a mainstay now. What is something in wrestling in general, be it on social media or the wrestling business or what have you? What is something that really irks you? What's something in wrestling that just really irritates the shit out of you? Burrito on a pole match. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, you know, girls that like to talk talk mess and don't realize that Tuesdays belong to me. Uh, no, nah, but um, like we got like I recently I'm not gonna say the school, uh, but I, I was recently at a school where like guys just didn't like they showed up late to training and they didn't get in the ring and like work on anything. They were just they're just there. And they waited till like the drills were over when they had open ring time. They go, oh, I want to work on my finish. And they've had like one match, two matches. It's like, dude, what, like, what finish? Like, you, you should be in here working, like, like working to get better. This is, this is, this is how, this is how you, you put in the work. This is how you put in the work to get better. Like, and I asked another guy who was saying, "You're not gonna get in the ring, work or anything." He was like, "Oh man, my head's not it, not it to 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 be in here." It's like, why waste your time coming? Why right. why why waste other people's time? Like it's just like I just don't like when like when, when laziness. Like when guys are trying like aren't putting in work when they're when they're training. Like if you're gonna be there, get something out of it. Like. I, I, that's that 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 kind of irks me. Um, other than that, like I I, I I I try to like not let things bother me too much. I'm very I'm very much more calm than I, than like in 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 years past. And where it's just like things are gonna happen, they happen. I'm just gonna go with the flow, and you know keep trying to be the best me that I can be. 
Well, another thing going for you, in addition to you go trotting and getting better and better, is you are also incredibly active on social media. And there's been a lot of older generation wrestlers saying that, you know, basically social media and the smarter wrestling fan is is making the business more difficult or hurting wrestling in some way or in some cases killing the business. Right. Um, how do you feel about how social media fits in with professional wrestling these days? I think it, it kind of opens up and lets people know, like, like who we are as, as people. Like, I just retweet things that I think are funny. Like, I, like everything I, I, I really put on Twitter is just to make my stuff laugh. Or I'm yelling at Phil Jackson in the, in the New York Knicks because he was so <laughs> stupid. So, and, and, and in between that, I, 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 uh, I, I promote my shows. So, like, yeah, sorry, I'm, I'm also re- reading right now about Phil Jackson's press conference that he had. And it's just making me angrier and angrier. Um... Yeah, that's let me need to take off Twitter. Um, but yeah, like it's 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 a thing that that's that's supposed to help us, and it does. It lets people know, like, hey, this is where I'll be. This is this is what I'm doing, and like, it lets it lets the fans know who you are, and and then you get sweet gifts of matches. Like everyone likes to see gifts; <laughs> they're awesome. People say, "Oh, gifts are killing us." No, gifts are making gifts are making wrestling cool again. Although. I do, I do agree that people shouldn't just do things just to get a gift. That that is a problem, and I can can admit to being a culprit of that. <laughs> uh, but you know, it, it it's it, you know it, it, fans like it. it. It's it's making the it's making the fans connect with us better. So like that's what it's all about connecting with the fans. Like however you can do that is how you should do it. So let me kind of let me kind of follow up on part of that, by the way. So you did say on social media recently that uh, until Phil Jackson is gone from the Knicks, you will not give them another penny. Uh, so have you picked a new a new uh, team to get behind then, since the Knicks are obviously out of the question? Uh, I have not picked a new team. Uh, being a Knicks fan is like being in an abusive relationship. Uh, <laughs> you always say you're going to leave, but you never actually do. Because you just can't for some reason, and I should leave. There, are, uh, there, there's a plenty of other fish. There's 29 other fish in the sea. Well, 27 because I wouldn't be a Cavs or Warriors fan right now. But you know, the Lakers are looking good right now. They're about to get Lonzo Ball, and I don't really care about Lonzo Ball, but Lavar Ball is awesome. Uh, uh, the, the, the Oklahoma City Thunder. Russell Westbrook, my favorite player right now. There's an option. Um. The Minnesota Timberwolves, they're going to be really good. The Milwaukee Bucks, the Clippers. There's plenty of other teams. But for some reason, me being an idiot, I'm loyal to the Knicks. And they hurt me all the time. But they will not get another dime from me. I will not buy anything. I will not buy a ticket. I will not buy a jersey. I will not. I'll, I'll watch the games on TV. I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I will. But <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm not going out of my way for this team. I stick by that. Okay. And then uh, I think uh, one that I, I'm interested to get your take on this one too here because uh, Jason is a big uh, theme park person and uh, there has been a lot of announcements for Nintendo World mm-hmm. in, in your particular park, Mr. Romero. Yeah, that's true. Uh, in uh, Universal Studios, I guess in all of the Universal Studios. They're starting at the one in Japan, apparently. With no surprise. Yeah, well, so, uh, so Jason, what are your thoughts on, Uni- on Nintendo World and then uh, Zach, uh, Captain Zach's uh, <laughs> Universal Tours? I will let you uh, put in your two cents on that. that. Man, I didn't even know, I didn't even see anything that's announced about N- Nintendo World, and I go to Universal at least three times a week. Um, <laughs> I should really know more about this place. Uh, I, I think it's awesome. I think it'd be great. I wonder where they would put it out of here. Obviously, it's starting in Japan, because every, Japan gets everything first. But I would, I would, I'm really interested in seeing what, what, what they what they put out here. Hopefully, it replaces that Sunday comic book part in Eyes of Adventure that sucks. Uh, Captain, Captain Zach Romero? A couple, of, a couple of notes here. Number one, Jason, you are 100% correct. Toon Lagoon sucks donkey balls <laughs> in Eyes of Adventure. 
Nobody gives a shit about there's a Kathy ice cream shop. Nobody gives a shit about that. I almost, though, walking through there, because it's the first time I've walked through there, it was uh, not too long ago, because uh, my shoot job does a family day through that in that mm-hmm. park. Um, so I got to go for very cheap, which is wonderful. Uh, I almost stopped to get a Popeye uh, picture just because I can't believe anybody actually would want to get a Popeye picture. Yeah, nobody gives a shit. Nobody gives a single shit. And, Jason, let me pitch you on this. You take out all the goofy shit from the Popeye ride at Toon Lagoon, but you leave the ride itself. The well, It's like one of those circle, um, like Congo River Rapids. It's yeah. one of those big circle boats that just sort of bounces yeah. around. It's a rapid, yeah, it's a yeah. Heavy, rapid so you, ride. you gut all the Popeye shit. You replace it with Pokemon shit. You make a Pokemon Snap ride. You could. I. Well, do you still get wet? Oh, yeah, probably. Well, you have to. It's water. Yeah, it's water. Yeah. Uh, Water I just hate wet. water rides, uh, but that would be cool. I just hate water rides. That's me personally. But the other thing is, the rumor that I have heard is that uh, a Nintendo expansion in Florida would mean that they would bulldoze uh, Fievel's Playland, Curious George, the Barney, A Day in the Park with Barney, all the kid area up next to E.T., that would all get flattened, and then that's where you build your Nintendo Land. Oh no, I like Curious George, but that that stuff can go because it, <laughs> it it kind of sucks. Um, I don't really like ET either. Like Frankie loves ET. The ride sucks though. Like that can go. Uh, that's the I'm last Spielberg ride though. Nintendo in there. Yeah, I heard that ET's not going anywhere. They might redo the. In- they might move where the entrance is though. Oh, okay. So that's that's the last I had heard on that one. Hopefully they'll move the creepy second half of that ride out because that's the no. Come on, you go to the alien planet and it's just a wide awake nightmare for another two minutes. <laughs> yeah. like, um, but Frank, but super ref Frankie Gastineau does doesn't he love that ride? ride. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Kate, let me ask you: What's your favorite and least favorite ride at Universal? My favorite ride is it between Spider Man and Hulk. Absolutely love those rides. And my least favorite ride. You know, it's not even, um, it's not even E.T. I would have to say it's Jimmy Fallon. Really? I <laughs> hate Jimmy. The, the line is really cool. The line's cool. But that's it. Jimmy Fallon rides sucks. Have you been it's on? still better than Twister, but it sucks. No, I've not been on the Jimmy Fallon uh, race in New York. Why not? I'm shocked. I own a company that makes a lot of t-shirts. <laughs> okay. We don't have a lot of free time to fuck about with late night hosts. Um, and, their, and their random and their, rides. And, and their races your... through various cities that replace Bill Paxton driven adventure What was shows. it there before Twister? Ghostbusters. See, God, now damn it, that would have been like... No, that's the beauty is uh, Universal, the contract they had uh, to use Ghostbusters ran out. In like ninety three, okay, ninety. No, probably would have been ninety four, ninety five. Okay, and their thought was, well, who gives a shit about Ghostbusters? Let's put some new hotness in here. Oh, what that movie just came out, Twister, perfect, and uh, not dated at all, right? And as we all know, one of the greatest movie franchises of all time, Twister, right. Yeah, so because uh, Twister Two was such a <laughs> yeah it answered all the questions remaining from Twister One right, um, and then the Jimmy Fallon or uh, not Jimmy Fallon the Minions ride has gone through like ten changes as well. Um, oh, other thing I, I found out once. it's almost like a forty five minute ride. Yeah, true. Uh, other thing I found out. So our Back to the Future ride closed in two thousand and. Four, I think. Okay. No, 2005. California's Back to the Future ride closed in 2006. When did Universal Japan's Back to the Future ride close? I'm going to bet you it hasn't. It's still open. Close. Fucking last year. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, God yeah. damn it. I didn't know that. I would have tried to put the money together to book a trip to ride that goddamn ride one more time. Japan gets, gets everything, man. Are they may I don't know if they still do. I know they had a version of Jaws. They may still have the Jaws right there. Oh God! Man. Yeah, so we'll see. But anyway, uh, Jason, uh, why Universal over Disney? Um, Universal. 
Universe was just more of a. It's 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 more it's more appealing to me than Disney. Uh, like Disney's cool, don't get me wrong. Like Vader loves Disney, so like many weekend we did Disney. But like, you like Universe is it's 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 closer. It's uh it it it's more it's more adult friendly than Disney. Um, it, it, yeah, I just yeah, Universal's Universal all the way. No. Final universal question. So let's say somebody like Chad or, or somebody who doesn't visit the park as often is there. What would be your insider advice to grab a bite to eat? What is the best place to grab a bite to eat that maybe is off the beaten path a little bit or maybe isn't you know quite as obvious to the average uh, tourist? Oh, man. Uh, number one, I'm going to say Mythos. It's, you know... It's the best. Uh, it's the best restaurant on property. Uh, there's also a, like a hot dog place in City Walk that's pretty good. Uh, and then as far as other in the park places, I always eat. I always eat at that uh, Bumblebee Man's uh, taco truck. So that would be. That'd be, that'd be great. <laughs> I love that it went from Mythos, which no joke has won like ridiculous amounts of culinary awards. Right. Like super focused high end dining. Second place, baseball hot dog Hall of Fame. Third place, Simpsons themed taco truck. <laughs> right. Like, there's really he's he's the Guy Fieri of theme park food. By the, really. by the way, I think all three answers. Are, I think all three no, answers no, no, are wrong right. because definitely cowfish is definitely the that best place, place in that park. Delicious. Cowfish is amazing. <laughs> I'll give you cowfish. I, I ate there once. I'll say you can have a bento Uh-oh. box which has burger sliders and sushi. It's oh fucking yeah, fucking awesome. I, I, once and I didn't like it. <laughs> well, that's you uh, know also an uncomfortable, uncomfortable place to be if you're under the age of like you know forty. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> but the good news is always fins to the left, fins to the right. How dare you? <laughs> I was out and uh, I, I, I didn't like my food, so the girls with me like made them give me something new because I don't like to send food back. She was like, "No, like have you eaten something you don't like?" He didn't like this, and I was like, oh man, I'm so embarrassed. So, um, yeah, I ended up getting something else, I don't remember what it was. It was also equally terrible. Yeah, that also <laughs> sucked off. But. So, also, okay, a, other final, final universal question. In your opinion, quit swearing. I can't hear you. Yeah, can't figure out why. <laughs> Are you landing a plane? In your opinion, uh,. The employees at Universal, who has the more uh, broken soul, dead-eyed stare? Uh, people working at the Harry Potter parks or people working at the Chocolate Factory in City Walk? See, I haven't been to the Chocolate Factory yet. I, didn't, I missed it's it, actually. Packed. It's delicious. It's, so- it's ridiculously expensive, and everyone there doesn't want to be there. It's pretty great. It's actually it's the most realistic version of Willy Wonka ever. <laughs> Just no dead. one's happy. Have you been to NBC? No, uh, yeah, I was there. Oh, Jesus, I've eaten there a dozen times back when it was the NASCAR Cafe, but I don't know if I've actually what? eaten there since it's been changed to the I can NBC really see you sport. heading right into the NASCAR Cafe. I... You, you look like a NASCAR person, if I've ever seen Su- one. Southern, Southern by birth. <laughs> what, what the fuck is that stupid saying? Something American, American, American by, by birth, birth Southern, Southern by the grace, grace of God. God. Thank you, there we go. Anyway, NBC, yes, go on. Delicious, yeah, I'm sure. Like, I mean, like, the nachos there are great, but, uh, employees there hate it. Uh, it's, like, the most inconvenient place to work. Like, no one actually likes being there. It, they're all miserable. So I want to say NBC. Hey, that sounds like possible, uh, personal experience from there. But anyways, <laughs> uh, Jason, so, uh, before we let you go, the most important part of the show, the show, the part that is officially sanctioned by Brian Cage. Right. Now is the time to get your shit in. By the way, when you go to Wrestle Circus, please tell Brian Cage we said hello. Yes, <laughs> yes, also true. I'll, uh, I'll text Brian Cage right now. I love every time I'm around Brian Cage. I immediately feel like I'm like strong as hell and can live <laughs> whatever I want. He, he, he exudes so muscular radiation. Tell Brian Cage. Yeah. You, tell Brian Cage you want to go with him to a uh, golden corral. to a golden corral when you when you're yeah, out. Tight. <laughs> hey. Hey yo, Cage, let's go fuck up a golden corral in Texas. <laughs> the indie, the indie cast said I want to, I should spend six hours with you in yeah, a, in a golden corral. So, 
So, but yeah, please, please, get please, your, let's get you, uh, get your, get your shit in. Where can people find your merch? Where can people find you online? Where can they find you coming up? Although we did uh, name drop a few uh, upcoming shows, but yeah, drop let's, more. Uh, yeah, let's let's name drop some more uh, shows that you'll be working on. Yeah, uh, Reza Circus, twenty uh, fourth of June, July seventh, back at PWG. Uh, PWX July eighth in North Carolina. So yeah, I'm going coast to coast. Um, I will be. Uh, I have such a busy schedule coming up. I don't really remember. I know I'll be at, at Ronan in August. Uh, uh, I should be down at Platinum July first. Uh, I'll be in the SCI tournament August fifth, fourth, and fifth. Um, man, I got. I don't remember. Fest on the twenty third of July. Uh, that's all I can remember off the top of my head right now. Sorry if anybody I didn't promote their show. I'm sure I'll tweet about it. Um, <laughs> where, where the, you can find me on Twitter at Fly Kate Fly and on Instagram at Fly Kate Fly. And I, you know, I haven't opened a store yet. I'm, I think I'm going to do it this week or when I get back from my circus. Open up either Pro Wrestling Tees or Bottom Line merch or something. I need to open an online store. Holy gimmick. So, um, oh, I can do that too. And they, I, I, need to, I need to go on and and open some some kind of online store. Uh, Apparently, there's a wonderful bear logo that can be yeah, used true. for shirts now. So, oh uh, yeah, Kate Bear is, is all is over. Um, <laughs> yes, there will be Kate Bear shirts pretty soon. I'm gonna start calling uh, them Kate Bear from now on. We actually by the way. had an idea for a pop culture shirt. We have uh, Kate like Kate Bear and Cat Veda somehow. True on a shirt. I'll say so we, that's a thing. I'll say we we definitely know an artist who who could yeah. make that happen. So oh, okay. we'll say. Oh. Putting up the buckshot signal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just trying to jam fully gimmicked in there. That's um, right. <laughs> Big boy. <laughs> well, anyways, Cade, thank you so much for making an appearance in season four. Uh, hopefully, we'll meet up at Universal at some point, and we can all shit talk oh, employees baby. and go get diabetes at the chocolate factory, and uh, and go get bento boxes of cowfish. True, and uh, I'm sure. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely have to figure out schedules for when Nintendo Land actually opens in Florida. Yeah. Plenty of uh, right. I need fo- to know. photo opportunities there. And I'll keep the conspiracy theories going for you so you can uh, be up to the minute on what I think might happen with, with uh, Nintendo Land. And uh, we wish you continued success and uh, beat the shit out of PWG and get that jacket over. Like, That's right. Get that, suit, get that track suit over. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> I asked for I so went, little. I went to Wrestle Circus this week too. Thank nice. you. That's that's all I need in this world. Um, I went everywhere. And maybe maybe a merch deal with Brian Cage. I don't know. We'll there see. There you go. <laughs> but uh, but nevertheless, thank you, Jason, for being on. Thank you to everyone listening to this all, episode. All dozens and dozens of you. Thank you for being the uh, wonderful dozens and dozens that you are for our two missing uh, mm. hosts here. Yeah. Damn women. Uh, <laughs> Christ's sake. J- see, Kate got it right. He knows how to tag team with the lady, and it right. works out well. We're we're committed to tag teams. and Yeah, we keep getting no-shows. Yeah, we, so, exactly. Well, cards always subject yeah. to change. True. So, well, t- until next time, everybody, I'm Chad Allen. I'm Zach Guerrero. And I'm Daisy Kate. He is. And we always say, Deuces! Deuces!